the last few weeks we've been doing a lot of videos with the channel Hard for Games. Our friend Tony's been on the last two episodes of our podcast, which uh, a lot of you have been watching lately, so thank you for that. Zelda 64, the beta data that we still want to be found. Since you have so much knowledge of working on Ocarina of Time and modding it and everything, you're also friends with Hard for Games, you've been keeping up with all of the beta stuff that we've been doing. So what are some stuff that you would like to see that has not been found yet, but we know actually does exist somewhere? And the files we got from the F-Zero data, I guess it was most likely maps, right? We had some item icons, we had some menu sprites, but we mainly had maps and text. Um, what we didn't get though is objects like Link's 3D model, um, NPCs, or anything that you know moves in the game. We didn't get any of that because that those object data are usually at the beginning of the ROM. And since F-Zero overwrote half of the ROM, we only got access to the other half, which that was mostly map data. So because of that, we have a lot that is still missing from the beta leaks. Mainly, we have the entire code of the game that's missing, like how to move the character, how to get the items. We have the animations, we have the 3D models for the objects and PCs. And we also have, that that's kind of like weird to say, but the header of the ROM, because each ROM has a specific name in the file. And uh, that's like at the beginning of the ROM, so it, it's gone, but I would have really liked to see what that header would have said. So yeah, that's pretty much what I would have liked to see. All right. Uh, Crybunny, you said you were new to the Zelda series, uh, so do you have any idea um, about some of the stuff that was missing from the original Ocarina of Time? Some of the stuff that was missing from the original Ocarina yeah. of Time? Hmm. Not so sure if, if your knowledge goes that deep. But, I don't know, I'm gonna have to maybe take this one from you guys a little bit. But yeah, what I know from Ocarina of Time is there's a character, Malin, who I really like. Is she in it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that would be the, the right Good. name. Okay, uh, but I want to see more of her. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. uh, don't feel bad. There's a lot of people that was commenting on the, all the videos that we were doing <laughs> that didn't know a lot of the information that was in there. So. Uh, Good. I'm going to learn a lot. I'm going to learn a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right, Daniel. Um, so one of the things on that ROM, that beta ROM that was found, like Melon said, there's a lot of old maps, um, like early versions of Hyrule Field that are different than the final game, uh, early versions of dungeons that are different from the final game, things like that. But one map that I really wanted to see, but hasn't seemed to come about yet, is the map for Castletown. Uh, because we saw um, in like very back back in the 90s, I feel like an old man, um, you know, there were like magazines and stuff with screenshots. And there's always those screenshots of Castletown. And it looked really different than what we got in the final game, it looked bigger. That was the big thing, uh, because in the final game, you really just get the market square with a fixed camera and a one back alley, and that's it, really. And so, but this looked like a huge, fully fledged 3D town closer, like it looked bigger than the castle town we even got in Twilight Princess. Um, so I would have really loved to have seen what that looked like at that time, but it's nowhere to be seen, so it probably got overwritten. Um, also, I don't think there's any music in that ROM in the beta at all, and it would have been really interesting file. to see if. Yeah, it would have been it would have been great to see if there was any songs that well, were different. Actually, the final game during an interview I was reading. Uh, it wasn't necessarily an interview. It was um, uh, reviews, or I don't know, like whatever it's called. Whenever websites talking to people that just got done playing the demo or whatever, mm -hmm. and. Preview, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but I think it was IGN had uh, an article up where they were talking to a lot of the people that had played the demo at the event where this beta was supposedly coming from. And they said a lot of the areas like Castletown and Hyrule Field did not have any music at all 
Instead, it was filled with sounds of like birds chirping in the background and stuff like that. That it was just ambient noises, not music. And uh, Pierre, who I tagged, um, was the one who wrote the article. Um, he shared a nice picture that he had with uh, Miyamoto holding up the... A, I guess it was one of their magazines, when they used to do print magazines, with uh, Ocarina of Time playing in the background. And in it, he said that after hearing all that stuff, like he would put his ear next to the TV with the TV turned all the way up to, so he could try to hear the sound because everything's so loud there. Anyone that's been to E3 or any other event knows that uh, there's a reason they give you headphones when you're playing a game. So, and that's even without all the TVs playing, you can still barely hear through the headphones. Um, and that's just people, the noise from everyone talking. But yeah, he was talking about how in that demo there was no noise or audio in the background or anything. So I wonder if um, it was overwritten, like we thought it might have been, or if it just wasn't included in that version. So. There probably was some music, not all of it, but usually the audio is like at the beginning of the ROM, like straight up at the beginning. So. Yeah. Everything got deleted. So, well, unfortunately. it's too bad though, because yeah. that game is is pretty well known for like its music being so iconic, right? And um, and a lot of the themes that started in that game are still like carried forward and and used in the series today, right? And so, like, if there was a say like an early version of like I don't know one of the warp songs or or even like the ranch theme or who knows what, <laughs> right? Even an early Hyrule Field theme, it just would have been I, I don't know just some deep-seated nerdy joy would just be spilling out of me <laughs> but yeah yeah well you know, whether it was there or not there i still think it would be really cool if it would have uh been featured because having early versions of some of those songs would be really great but the thing that i want is uh kind of not really a debate but a, d a discussion melons and i have been having where i've been asking him what he thinks that the green uh, medallion would do because as we know the uh so all of the medallions would have their own magic ability and they could also be equipped to the arrow in order to make uh, like the fire arrow ice arrow or whatever and we've been talking about the wind medallion where you think it would have been used for more of a teleportation thing like you would shoot it and it would teleport you because right. that's what the medallion does on its own and i had the thought that it would almost be like the Gale Boomerang from Twilight Princess to where you throw it and there's the big tornado that comes behind it, but instead of that, it would just be like a gust of wind blowing with the arrow. Um, More like, like the um, tornado rod and um, spirit tracks then? Yeah, something yeah. like that. And it would okay. just like blow an enemy up or blow it back or um, since the forest temple section of Ganon's castle is all like wind-based puzzles instead of having anything to do with an actual forest or grass or anything and uh, the forest temple was orig originally thought to be more wind-based and that explains why it has the symbol of like fans on the medallion as opposed to a leaf or a tree or something that's actually forest or grass related um, and then in Majora's Mask when you get to the first dungeon that's the forest themed dungeon it does have a lot of wind-based puzzles because you're you playing as the deku and you're shooting up and flying around and stuff and then in twilight princess that forest temple also has a bunch of wind-based puzzles where uh you have to use the gale boomerang to spin the fans and stuff and i think a lot of the fan spinning puzzles could have maybe been what was um what might have been going on with uh the forest temple in ocarina of time but i don't know i like Millen's ideas as well, but I also like mine. <laughs> so <laughs> I just had an idea just now. Yes. Um, Ganon's castle in the final game has a trial for every single medallion, right? Yes. Right. You enter the forest medallion trial. What did you do? You use dense fire and fire arrows to lit up torches to go to the next room, huh? My guess mm -hmm. is that maybe the torches were lit and you would have had to unlit them with the uh, forest arrow. Oh, I guess. yeah. Oh, and they just. And they changed that the so fire. the torches are unlit instead of lit 
by default. That's that's really interesting. That makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. I, I haven't like even that. thought of that. I just figured it was like Zelda filler because there's so many torch lighting puzzles in the series that they were just like, I just slap something in there. <laughs> a big fire you know, in the totally forest area. Sense. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that totally makes sense though. Especially it's because the um, dungeon. in Twilight Princess, like Jesse mentioned, when you have the Gale boomerang, there, there's puzzles like that where you have to extinguish torches um, and then light them back up. So it uh, it would make sense if that might, might have just been a concept they cut out and then reused later, right? Alright, uh, does anyone have anything else to talk about with the, the beta or anything? Um, you haven't said too much. I had the uh, Spirit oh. Medallion thing oh, yeah? uh, where I talked to, to I talked with it with Ferguson last time and I'm thinking that the Warp Arrow, which was Spirit, so you know the spirit medallion was supposed to turn you into navi and you could fly around mm -hmm. i'm thinking mm -hmm. the spirit arrow would have been you shoot it at a wall and just teleports you to the wall kind of like as an op long shot what i'm thinking they've replaced mm -hmm. that with though is uh the scarecrow because the scarecrow is something from the game that's optional yet it's required like it's always been option optional like you talk to the NPC and then you come back to it as adult. You play a random yeah. song. It's really weird in how you get that song. And then randomly you get places you can use it at. And it's really like random because you don't know where to use it. But for mm -hmm. Navi just going there, you know, like Navi goes mm -hmm. there and OK, I know I have to play the Scarecrow song. And there's some rooms in the Fire Temple you can only access using that Scarecrow song, and it's Kultura. So, my guess is that... Which is quite counterintuitive as well, uh, because you'd have to go out of your way to Lake Hylia to unlock that, even though, you know, that's way before you would have to go to the Water Temple anyway, so... Yeah. yeah. Go on, though, so sorry, you no. <laughs> have to go back, and then you use Pierre, you get this golden Skultula, you get a chest as well, with, like, some rupees, I think, or a piece of heart. No, not uh, rupees. And then yeah, gold, that's it. It's like 200 rupees and two gold sculptulas in that right. room. I just played it yesterday. <laughs> Nobody is going to notice. Like, imagine you don't have the Scarecrow song, right? You mm. do the Fire Temple, you see that place, you see, oh, I need something else. Then nobody's going to remember that and go back once they have the Scarecrow song. So my guess is that the Scarecrow replaced the Teleport Arrow. Yeah, and I think a, a lot game. of people wouldn't um think it would have anything to do with scarecrow at first anyways and it would just be com <sighs> sorry everyone watching uh discord does this we need to go to something else <laughs> so get used to this happening two or three more times uh, oh, no. but I, I was just telling the chat while discord uh messed up that we should move to like <laughs> zoom or something else that's like a little bit better for my computer i don't know but anyways um a lot of people don't even go to Lake Hylia as an adult until uh, mm -hmm. they've already beaten the Fire Temple. And by that point, a lot of people wouldn't even notice that there's uh, Navi goes up there for you to play the song. And then wouldn't even tie it in until later that, like, oh, you can do this with that or whatever. Um, kind of like how you can go back to the Deku Tree or Dodongo's Cavern mm -hmm. as an adult for, like, one Skulltilla. Yeah. In Dodongo's Cavern. Yeah. This is and you have to go back in the Deku Treaty at Bomb, or after you get Bombs, um, as Child Link, too. There's just, like, weird yeah. little secrets here and there that are just so counterintuitive, in my opinion, um, in that way, where it's like, there's no, like, who would remember to go back for this, unless you're, like, a hardcore completionist. Um, so... Yeah. It's useless. Yeah. It only gives you Skultulas, which, at the end of the day, only gives you, like, uh, rupees. Yeah. 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 It's it's strictly just for the sake of completing it. Um, not unlike the Korok seeds <laughs> in Breath of the Wild. Only at least those you can pretty much get from the beginning without any extra um, items, like ha not having to backtrack. So And all the stuff that but. you use the larger wallet for is stuff that you're supposed to get anyways. Um, like the Zora tunic is given to you, the 
Goron tunics given to you, the Hylian... No, the Hylian shield's not even that much. Um, but anyways, uh... Crybunny, do you have anything to add on to all of this? Did you, when you were playing through Ocarina of Time, did you notice anything that felt like it may have been unfinished or that seemed like it should have been more? Um, well, I haven't played, I haven't played Ocarina of Time yet, <laughs> oh. but that's interesting to hear that there's something earlier. similar. No, I haven't yet. It's on my list. Okay. But that's interesting to hear that there's something similar to the Korok seeds, because the Korok seeds are new in Breath of the Wild, right? Yeah. But is that mm -hmm. something that Zelda games do? Do they make you do these kind of like, grind tasks yeah for, but this i know what the prize is though i know what the prize is instead of instead of 900, 900. So. okay yeah 900 seems really cruel <laughs> it is <laughs> so yeah. yeah that's funny they make you do this these grind things in other games too yeah ocarina of time has the gold skull Tales. um the one that i hated the most was in a link between worlds where there was the my mys is that what they were called no yeah but those are far more manageable because <laughs> at least the map tells you like the map breaks it up into each province right and it tells you how many are left in each province not just your grand total right so if you're missing like two my mys at least you'll know which section of the map you have to look in instead of just being like <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll counter I'll counter you and say that in the map select of the game, if you've collected all the scotulas of a yes. certain area in OT, it tells you there's a scotula icon next true. to it that appears. Um, yes, but Breath of the Wild just leaves you high and dry, and there's way yeah. more quarantine. <laughs> and the thing is, like, like this happened to me. I completed the game, but it took me ages finding all those Korok seeds. And I thought I had planned it out. I was like, I decided what route I was going to go with it so that the very last Korok seed I would get was the one at the very tip top of Hyrule Castle oh, above the really? Sanctum. And I was like, that's nice. going to be the last one I get because it's going to be a great epic moment. And then I'm going to go and fight <laughs> Ganon. And then I get it. And I'm like, yes, nothing happened. What? <laughs> and I realized I, <laughs> so I warped to check, to check my, uh, my, the, 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 the loading screen to see the numbers and i had missed uh -huh. one korok seed no. somewhere <laughs> and i was like where where? <laughs> where so i had to go back to the the hero's path thing and i pulled oh. up the zelda dungeons interactive map and That's i painstakingly I <laughs> followed my path and checked off on the interactive map every time i got a korok seed and it was about 200 in that i saw the one that i missed because there was two right right next to each other on like the beach at the very south of the map mm -hmm. and i was like oh my god i walked right past one earlier oh, no. and so, imagine if it was the one in link's bed you forgot oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible that would be terrible but no it's uh so yeah like that i feel like breath of the wild it leaves you high and dry with the koroks as far as like tracking your completion you need almost like an external source like the interactive yeah. map or something whereas at least these games they kind of um, they kind of show you your progress in that way. Like you're like, oh, oh, Death Mountain. Okay, I've got everything on there. I've got all the sculptures and stuff. So it's yeah, and the my mice in a Link Between Worlds do the same thing. So I don't know why they. It's almost like a regression <laughs> to be less yeah, helpful. Times twenty for like nine hundred too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So so yeah, the my mice aren't that bad. At least they're cute too. So. The Koroks yeah. are cute too. Sculptulas are just big spiders, so they're not very cute. Oh, <laughs> not cute. Doesn't sound cute. Not cute. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> wait, what, Daniel? I always thought the Mai Mai's were cute though, because they're like oh. little. Your video is on like a two-second delay. Is it? Yeah. I hate it. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna just <laughs> turn it off. All right. And back Daniel's back. gone. Let's talk bad about him. Hey. <laughs> Root. <laughs> what? No. Okay. So uh, with. Is everyone ready uh, for the next topic? I'm yeah. ready. Okay. Uh, so we're going to be doing three instead of two because numbers are hard. And Melons mentioned uh, that he had a lot to say about Pokemon and Mario. So we're going to go ahead and get into that before we get into uh, the funny Nintendo Zelda stuff. Uh, so uh, we have... A rumored and heavily speculated Zelda 35th anniversary coming up, and uh, while we are expecting if it does happen, a lot of stuff will be coming then, but for now, the only really big games that we know of that are coming for sure is Pokemon Snap, 
which no one ever thought was going to happen again, and Super Mario 3D World, which everyone probably maybe thought wasn't going to come. No. <laughs> Almost every Wii U game got remade or re-released on Switch, so I guess everyone had an idea that it was going to come. But it also mm -hmm. has uh, its uh, expansion DLC coming with it, so that's really interesting. And uh, reminds me more of... Um, do you guys remember a while back when Nintendo posted that image that everyone thought was meant to be uh, a hint at Super Mario Sunshine 2 or... Oh, with uh, Mario, like, eating a watermelon or something? Yeah. Two C's on his face. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> I, I think... Yeah. Uh, so everyone thought the two seeds uh, were... Um, I just thought we got melon speed runs here and he was eating a watermelon. Anyways, yeah, that's I'm what... easily distracted. <laughs> so uh, he had the two seeds and everyone thought like, oh, two, is that Mario Odyssey 2? Is it going to be like a spiritual successor mm -hmm. to Sunshine? Or is it going to be Super Mario Sunshine 2? Or what's it going to be? Because he's on the beach and that had to do with a lot of Sunshine and he has the two. But now I'm thinking maybe it was a hint towards this or it could have just been a hint that they were working on um sunshine to be re-released in the 3d collection i'm playing with a little tool thing so just ignore me um but yeah since you have a lot to talk about it let's start with mario and uh melons how did it feel oh. when uh mario was chomping on you what <laughs> yeah when because he was the melon yeah. Oh, um, that, uh, that that was really nice. No. Um... <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's it for now. But a lot of rumors, news, and details are slowly leaking out. So please stay subscribed and notified, and join our Discord to make sure you stay up to date on all Zelda Breath of the Wild two news. And you can find our Zelda podcast, the Hylian Gamescast, here on YouTube and on iTunes where we have had many guests who have worked on the Zelda series and have shared a lot of amazing stories about voice acting, such as Patricia Somerset voice acting as Zelda, Mike Drucker on Zelda's writing or translation team, coming up with the jokes in the game, stories behind the names of characters that he created, Please subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you. If you are a fan of our Zelda videos like this, Zelda Theories, our Zelda podcast, the Hylian Gamescast on iTunes, we would all really appreciate your support at patreon.com slash gameoverjesse. That and buying our t-shirts will get you and your YouTube or Twitch a shout out every week on our Hylian Gamescast. And if you send in a photo of yourself in our Game Over Jesse or Hylian Gamescast t-shirt, we can use it for promotion at the end of some of our videos.